This is our second forces video and this is going to be over inclined planes and we're moving rather quickly through uh, forces but it part of what we have to do to have a review time toward the end of the year and what we're going to look at first is what is happening to a mass of M that is on an inclined plane. The inclined plane is going to have an angle we're going to call theta And then we should also know that gravity is going to act straight down. We should know that as a fact that gravity is always toward the center of the Earth. So from every object, it's going to act straight down from its center of mass. And the next thing we should notice is that the normal force should act perpendicular to the surface. And in this case, the normal force and the weight of the object are not going to be equal to each other. And because the normal force and the weight do not equal, equal to each other, uh, the acceleration or the movement of the object is going to accelerate down the plane. And that's mostly because gravity is going to have to pull it down the plane. So what we're going to do is find a way to break up one of our forces to find the acceleration of the mass on the inclined plane. And one of the things we should notice is that the acceleration is perpendicular to the normal force. And we're going to go ahead and write that down for a minute. Make sure we know that we recognize that that is important. So what it means for us when the acceleration is perpendicular to the normal force is that the normal force does not contribute anything to the acceleration of the object. So what we're trying to break up is the force that's going to help the object accelerate. Something that will be helpful to you moving forward is any time a force is perpendicular to the acceleration of the object, it's not going to affect, to affect the acceleration of the object. Uh, this applies in uniform circular motion uh, where the uh, force is toward the center and the acceleration is toward the center and they're in the same direction. Uh, but if the force was perpendicular, it does not affect the acceleration at all. So now, in order to help ourselves find the acceleration, we're going to have to resolve gravity into separate components. And those components are going to be uh, perpendicular to the plane and parallel to the plane. Uh, so we're going to end up finding a, an X component and a Y component of gravity. So to help ourselves look at this, we're going to draw a bigger triangle so we can see the components. And we're going to set our mass on, on the plane, and it's going to be at an angle theta. And we're going to, let me make that a little bit bigger, we're going to try to separate its components into perpendicular to the plane and parallel to the plane. So looking at our two components, one perpendicular and one parallel to the plane, you add those two components together and you'll find the resultant in this case, which is its weight. So we have our angle theta, and then over here on the right side of our created triangle from our perpendicular to the plane component of weight, we know that that's 90 degrees. To help ourselves figure out this triangle, we have to find uh, a complementary angle. So if you look at uh, our angle theta and the newly drawn triangle we have with our parallel and perpendicular components we know that this part is 90 minus theta so that makes this interior part of our drawn triangle the angle theta because it's complementary angles there so if you recognize that that is how it's going to work it's important that you draw your triangle in a consistent manner so that way you can always have the complementary angle there and recognize that when we draw our triangle that the angle theta is that uh, particular point there where those two points uh, the vertical component and then our weight come together so doing a little bit of trig we're going to recognize that mg cosine theta is our vertical component and mg sine theta is our horizontal component or our parallel component so mg cosine theta is our perpendicular and mg sine theta will be our parallel component of gravity. 
Now knowing that our acceleration is down the plane, what that helps us with is understanding that mg cosine theta is perpendicular to the acceleration, so it won't affect it, and mg sine theta is parallel to the acceleration, so it will affect the acceleration. It will be a part of it. So now if we redraw our mass and put our components, our force components on it, we have mg cosine theta perpendicular to the plane, fn perpendicular to the plane, normal force, and then mg sine theta going down the plane. And since our acceleration is down the plane, we should recognize that fn and mg cosine theta are going to equal each other and therefore cancel each other out. So our net force will be mg sine theta, and our net force will equal the mass times the acceleration. So we can set those two equal to each other. So if we start to solve this, our masses cancel, and then we recognize that our acceleration is g sine theta, basically some fraction of gravity. We must recognize this is a problem without friction. So our acceleration is down the plane. There is no frictional force to hold it up, so we have a frictionless incline, uh, and we'll add those things in later. So now we're going to try an example and we're going to put some numbers to it. So we're going to have a mass of 5 kilograms attached to a pulley system where all our pulleys are frictionless and massless right now so they're all negligible and we're going to attach another 5 kilogram mass to it and it's going to be at a 30 degree angle which is going to make this a little bit nicer because it's something uh, that's very easy to recognize from geometry or pre-cal. So our incline is going to be frictionless, and our job here is to find the acceleration of the object. So now we're going to draw in our forces where the weight of the 5 kilogram object that is hanging there has 50 newtons. It's going to have a tension force up, and then the first mass that is on the incline will have a tension force that is... Um, parallel to the plane and a normal force that is perpendicular to the plane and then we'll have weight straight down that is 50 newtons but that doesn't really help us we need the components so we can get perpendicular and parallel to the plane so we'll have mg cosine theta perpendicular to the plane and mg sine theta parallel to the plane pulling it down the plane which will be 25 newtons mg sine theta uh, will be able to half our weight and it'll be 25 newtons, and then mg cosine theta will be 43 newtons. You can check my math on that if you'd like. Now, as a quick note, if the AP exam asks you to draw a free body diagram, uh, the important thing is not to include components. They are not looking for the components. It is important for you to do it to help. To, it's very useful for you on the exam and to get the question correct. But if they ask for a free body diagram, of what is going on here, do not include components. Draw the forces that are actually acting on the object because the components are something that we create. So, um, and in this problem, we're trying to find acceleration. So, what we're going to look at now is something we did last year in AP1 is to draw these in a, uh, a, a line, a horizontal, uh, take all our components, draw our objects in a horizontal component direction where we can cancel things out in a very simple manner. So what we have is 50 newtons of weight to the right and 25 newtons of mg sine theta to the left. Uh, the 5 kilogram object that is on the inclined plane has mg cosine theta acting perpendicular to the plane at 43 newtons, a normal force up which is equal and opposite. We're going to have a tension pulling it up the inclined plane that we do not know. And then the hanging object is going to have a tension pulling it up uh, vertically that we do not know, but those tensions are all part of the same rope, so they cancel each other out. And then normal force and 43 newtons cancel each other out. So uh, we know that 43 newtons is our normal force and because the acceleration is perpendicular, which equals zero, so it's not going to affect it. So now what we do is we treat this as one very large object. So the five kilograms and the five kilograms become one object, so we have a 10 kilogram object being pulled with 50 newtons to the right and 25 newtons to the left. 
So now we can write net force equations where net force equals MA and net force equals 50 newtons minus 25, where MA, uh, the mass in that equation, is the total effective mass, so the 10 kilograms there. So we have 10 kilograms times acceleration equals 25 newtons. And divide by 10, the acceleration of the system is going to be 2.5 meters per second squared. And it's going to be down, uh, pull us up the inclined plane or down on the other side of that. So that we can see the full rotation of the acceleration here, or full direction of the acceleration is in that direction. So everything seems to be accelerating in the direction of our unbalanced force. Uh, and I showed you the easy way to do this. There's a hard way to do it where you draw your parallel force equations. And we're going to have to, you're going to have to be able to do what we call the hard way um, when we get into massive pulleys. Right now our pulley is frictionless and massless, so it's negligible. But when we get into massive pulleys, you're going to have to be able to do this the hard way. So I'm going to show you that now. So what we have is our net force equals M1A, where M1 is the mass on the inclined plane. And that one is going to have tension minus its mg sine theta, which is 25 newtons. And then we're going to have the m2a, net force equals m2a, for the one that is hanging from the pulley vertically. And its net force is going to be m2g minus tension. We all know that this is going to accelerate in the direction of the unbalanced force. So what we do now is we have 5a equals tension minus 25. And then 5a is going to equal 50 minus t. Drawing, uh, substituting in our numbers for all of those equations for the uh, for those net force equations there, where we had the sum of the forces, and also where our ma equals that. So our red equation is the top black one there, and then our blue equations combined together is the bottom black equation there. And we combine those, adding them vertically. And we get 10A, and those tensions cancel. It's nice when math works, uh, works out. So those tensions cancel. We have one positive tension and one negative tension. So those cancel each other out. So I have 10A is basically going to equal 25 newtons, exactly what we experienced just a second ago where the acceleration is 2.5 meters per second squared. It is the same process. Uh, just doing it the hard way is a way of seeing how the uh, forces cancel out, and it's going to help us when we get into massive pulleys because at that point we're going to have more free body di uh, more not more free body diagrams. We are going to have more free body diagrams, but more force equations that we have to deal with and it's good to see how they cancel each other out and get to the end product. So, uh we'll do some more practice with this in class. We've already started some of that practice and we'll continue to do so until we get the hang of it.